No one in their right mind is walking into a BMW dealership with £70,000 in a suitcase and coming out with a BMW iX. Good afternoon. We are in the fading light of the sort of spring sunshine. The days are getting longer and things are starting to feel better. Now, earlier this morning, I posted a video about EV sales saying that at auction, these cars were absolutely bombing and nobody wanted to buy them. And then lots of you contacted me and said cool stuff. So here's a little part two with some comparative values with cars that are actually for sale right now. So first up, let's look at a comment from Jonathan. A mate of mine at work bought a Volkswagen ID3. He waited a year for it to be delivered and then he ran it for six months. During that time, prices went insane. And last October, so what's that, six months ago, the dealer offered him £36,000 to buy it back, but he hung on to it. Last week, he reconsidered and asked what they'd offered for it, and they said £21,000. How can the value of that vehicle have fluctuated by £15,000 in six months? Brilliant. Thanks, Jonathan, for that one. Now, what I want to look at is a Nissan Leaf. Well, I don't want to look at a Nissan Leaf, obviously, but one was sent to me. So this is on Facebook Marketplace right now. It's a 2011 Nissan Leaf. It's the 107 horsepower electric engine, so it's 12 years old. It's done 82,000 miles and it is currently on Marketplace. Fair enough, it's got a few scratches and it is used at £2,895. I thought, blimey, that looks cheap for a Nissan Leaf. So I checked what We Buy Any Car would offer for that car. We Buy Any Car, say £2,675, so a couple hundred quid less. So this car is for sale at marginally above a rough trade value from We Buy Any Car. Now, brand new, that Nissan Leaf was £30,000 with a range of 124 miles from its electric battery. It's a slightly older fashioned battery technology because I believe they're air cooled. Correct me in the comments, I know you will. But that means the total depreciation on that car with a new price of £30,000, and we do have to say there was a £5,000 government contribution, but still the numbers are crazy. £30,000 brand new, it's worth £2,895 today. That is £27,105 of depreciation in 12 years, or £2,259 depreciation per year. That means that this Nissan Leaf has only 9.65% of its value left. It's lost 90% of its value in 12 years. But interestingly, the seller on this listing says that the battery has eight bars left on the meter and is good for 55 miles from a full charge. 55 miles is down from 124. That means that the range that that car has is only 44% of what it was when it was new. So in 12 years, the Nissan Leaf has lost 90% of its value and 55% of its battery capacity. Two comparisons coming up. Let's look at a 2011 Ford Focus, and then let's apply those depreciation statistics on both the battery and the price to a more expensive electric vehicle. So first up, the Ford Focus as an equivalent. Let's do two things. First, let's pretend you bought both of these cars. I don't know why you bought two cars, but you bought them both in 2011. This is a 1.6 litre, 150 horsepower petrol Ford Focus. I found a 2011 Ford Focus EcoBoost 1.6. Brand new, that would have been 19,350 quid. So 10 and a half thousand pounds cheaper than the Nissan Leaf. Low battery, that's ironic. 10 and a half thousand pounds cheaper than the Nissan Leaf. The price now is 5,959 quid. So £6,000 to the £3,000 of the Nissan Leaf. So the Ford Focus that was 10 grand cheaper than the Nissan Leaf is now 12 years later worth twice as much. So if we take those figures on depreciation, the Nissan Leaf depreciated to the tune of £27,000 and the Ford Focus depreciated to the tune of £13,000. Per year, the Nissan Leaf was depreciating at £2,259 a year, 
whereas the Ford Focus was pretty much exactly half that at 1,116. In terms of the value left, if the Ford Focus is worth six grand, that means it has 30% of its original value left in the car compared to the 10% for the Nissan. And in terms of range, as we said, the Nissan's range were new, 124 miles. Now it can only do 55 miles. Well, the Ford Focus is a petrol. You can get 570 miles out of a tank of petrol in the Focus. And right now, if I went and bought that car and filled it to the brim with petrol, I would get probably 570 miles. So zero loss on the engine. Also, I should mention I'm sitting in my 200 and something thousand mile Volvo that when we dynoed the other day now has more power than when it came out of the factory. This car will go on forever. So in terms of the range left as an equivalent, that would mean I'd be buying a Ford Focus that I would fill the tank and it would only do half a tank's worth of travel. So a couple of notes on that one, a couple of things I want to add. It is difficult to compare like for like. We know electric technology has changed, but this is a 12-year-old electric car and a 12-year-old petrol car, and you cannot deny the facts. The petrol car is now worth exactly twice as much as the, as the electric car, and we can see that the electric car has lost 90% of its value relative to 70% for the Focus, uh, notwithstanding the fact that the leaf will continue to deteriorate up until the point the battery needs replacing, which will be hugely expensive. The Focus won't. Yes, there's servicing costs. Yes, there's running costs like road tax. But like for like, money for money, how much better does the Focus work out over 12 years? Well, uh, I can tell you, you're better off by about £15,000 over 12 years. And maybe you could take into account running costs and you could say, OK, if you bought that Nissan Leaf brand new and if you kept it for 12 years, maybe the running costs would justify the depreciation. But you'd have to be a very specific type of user to be able to justify 27 grand's worth of depreciation across 12 years and battery deterioration to the degree of 54% of its power lost. And again, people don't buy them like that. They buy them for three years and then they chop them in and get another one. It's so wasteful. So if that's an entry level EV, let's just imagine if we applied those figures to a more expensive EV, because let's be honest, that's what everybody buys. Let's have a look at the BMW iX. I always pick that one because it's an ugly one. Sorry, Rich, if you still watch my videos, I'm not picking on you because you've got one. It's just my go-to car because I, I, I just think they're hideous. I know you like yours, that's fine. Uh, they have a start price of £69,905, which obviously nobody pays for two reasons. One, nobody buys an entry-level BMW iX. They put options on it so they're more money. And two, nobody actually pays for them. They're all tax-deductible business cars. No one in their right mind is walking into a BMW dealership with £70,000 in a suitcase and coming out with a BMW iX. For your £70,000 of suitcase cash, you get 257 miles range out of the iX. Although if I speak to Rich, I don't think he's ever got anywhere near like 257. I'm sure he'll be here in the comments to correct me on just how many miles he is getting out of his iX, but it ain't 257. On equivalent values, I said that the Nissan Leaf lost 90% of its value. That would mean that your 12-year-old BMW iX that you paid £69,905 for is now worth 6,746 quid, and it has a battery range of only 113 miles. Okay, you can tear me apart on the figures, you can tear me apart on the fact that the battery technology has changed and you can't, you know, directly associate the figures from a slightly ropey Nissan Leaf from Marketplace with a brand new BMW iX, but the point remains the same. These electric cars are going to depreciate like a rock dropped off a bridge. Let me try that again. These electric cars, these expensive, large, big, luxury electric cars are going to depreciate like a green Volvo 850 T5 that has been launched at high speed off Seven Bridge. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. The rain has gone away. The sun is now shining on me and it agrees that the real green thing to do is just to look after your old car. Says the man who has the highest mileage Volvo 850 T5 in the country that is currently in a garage not working and is supposed to be on a display at the NEC tomorrow and is nowhere near ready. Oh, Jeff, that was a terrible conclusion. You just undid all of your good work. 
So if you have a Nissan Leaf that you can lend me to put on my stand at the NEC tomorrow, jeffbicecars at gmail.com. Thanks for watching. Jeff buys cars. Still YouTube's most boring car channel.